What's happening? Welcome to the 34th episode of the Slap Stream with Georgia live from Slapsville. First, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, all the Patreons and all the people that are supporting the channel. Um, so special thanks like for the for the people that are on the Patreon. And that will be Jake Taylor, Dan Rondo, Jose Arana, Etienne Rousset, Mikey, Paul Moonmo, Evil Lee, Richard Trail, Scott Owen, Bob Cullen, Kurt Reback. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, I really appreciate the donations on PayPal and Venmo. Uh, you can check out all these links uh, under the video. And for this one, I have a very, 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 very special guest. And I'm super excited. It's like amazing guy uh, that most of you know or should know. Like, you know, I'm not sure like how my rockabilly and psychobilly people are aware of his uh, great playing and unique playing. But you should be. Um, and you'll soon see why. But most of the upright bass players are definitely aware of the phenomenon that's called Adam Benezra. And without further ado, I would like to bring Adam to the Slapstream. Hey, hey, hey. What's hey. up? <laughs> How's it going, man? I'm great. How are you? Pretty good. It's... Uh, it's uh, During the... The, the uh, circumstances. Yes, exactly. It's kind of weird living in these times, but it's it's not boring. No. <laughs> How are things in Israel? Uh, we are in lockdown. Uh, everybody in their houses. Uh, we're, it's. I mean, I'm I, I'm lucky because I live in a small village, so it it's not different from regular life. Everybody's here, so calm and, 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 and we have our garden and, and it's fun and nature uh, but everything is shut uh, I guess like in the States like everywhere else I heard that there are some concerts in Spain though but uh, oh okay maybe it's temporary I don't know <laughs> are you when was the last gig that you played the last live gig was actually in September in Switzerland somehow I managed to to go there for a festival uh, but that was the last one, and all kinds of Zoom show, as we everyone do on oh, great. the live stream. So, so, where can people find out, like, when you do your Zoom shows? Your website is that the uh, best? My spot? web, my website, uh, fa all the social media thing, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, they can uh, uh, sign up for my newsletter, and then they get it uh, straight to their mail. Yeah. Cool. That's, um, yeah, I highly recommend all of you Slapstream viewers to do that and um, check out Adam's show. You know, Adam and me met, there was like maybe five years ago or six years ago. I think it was. I think six. Yeah, 2015, when we both played the Bass Passion mm -hmm. show in Serbia. It was really a fun one. Yeah, great. Yeah, it's great, really, great, really great, great festival. Times. Um, all right, so let's start with uh, the official part of the uh, interview. Uh, when uh, when did you start playing music and how did you get interested in music? I was five. Uh, I started playing when I was five, uh, playing the violin. Uh, I, my mother plays the piano and my grandmother sings, so it was like uh, uh, into the family, something in the family. And my mother just uh, asked me, uh, told me that uh, I asked her to play the violin back then. Uh, so that was my start. Uh, after four years, I, I thought that it wasn't cool enough for me. So I started to play the electric guitar for a for few more years. And then I discovered the electric bass and later on the double bass. But you, you also play some other instrument. You play, I, I think that I saw you play clarinet and oud. Yep, clarinet and oud um, and flute. Uh, uh, these are like instruments that I uh, added, uh, you know, in time. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, every instrument that, that I mentioned was a gift. I get a gift, uh, an oud as a gift or a flute as a gift. And oh. I just started playing it. Uh, I, 
I typed on YouTube how to play the flute, <laughs> <laughs> saw some videos, some tutorials, and started uh, playing, you know. And uh, th did you have any formal education or are you yourself taught? My, f I mean, I, I was, uh, I, I was learning jazz uh, in high school. So there was like two years of, of, uh, of in, in a jazz department in high school and that's it. Uh, most of my theoretical knowledge is from there, you know, scales and arpeggios and rhythm, all the, the basic stuff uh, is from there. And after that, I just played and discovered things on my, on my own. And that was all in Tel Aviv, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm oh, from okay. Tel Aviv. And, and yeah. And, and uh, I was always interested. I loved, you know, music from, um, from Israel. I even had a, a Sephardic band what, 15 years ago or so, um, Shira Utfila. And I really got interested in Makams. Uh, and I was wondering, like, do you, do you learn that type of stuff, like, in regular school? Or you learn... No, no, you don't, regular... you don't learn it. If you, if you want to, to... If you take the, the Arabic or ethnic uh, instruments, like oud or ne or all kinds of... Uh, or, or Arabic violin, then you, you can learn it. But it's not like a... a yeah, I think that you, that you do, that you learn. Uh, oh, most of Israeli uh, musical knowledge is based on Western music. Okay. Uh, but when I picked up the, the oud, I, I learned all this makam and microtones uh, scales and, and also implemented on the bass. So it's really, really fun you know, to play. <laughs> the tremolo of the wood. Something like that. <laughs> That's so cool, man. I love that. Um, so, so would you consider yourself like a, a, a jazz player or a world music player or, or something else? I really else? don't know how to, uh, <laughs> how to describe myself. Uh, I guess in my, I, I'm not, I, I'm not, my music is not like a classical jazz thing. There is no swing in my, in my, in my, most of my tunes. Uh, but in a way that jazz uh, um, combine all kinds of different styles, uh, like world music and, uh, and, and electronic music. So I guess that's, that's the one that you can define me. Let's say, Electro ethno jazz uh, <laughs> would be the, the definition. That's the, that's kind of the question that I kind of don't like when they you know people ask me, but I had to ask you. You know like how how you feel? Do you have that kind of like a more jazz approach or more of a classical approach? I was assuming it was not classical, but I was not sure. I, actually, yes, I I, pl I played piano since I was seven. Uh, and actually, my next album is going to be a piano solo pieces album. Uh, oh. So I did play uh, classical music uh, uh, before I played jazz, actually. I started playing jazz when I started playing the bass uh, in the age of the double bass, when in the age of 15, 16. And before that, I used to play all kinds of fugues and, uh, and other uh, piano pieces have you played any cl any classical music on the bass uh, i played in all kind of amateur uh, orchestras uh, and there was like one year that i went to a classical uh, player one of the israeli philharmonic uh, players and for one year i, I really uh, worked on on the bow uh, <laughs> skills um, but not professionally. I've never considered myself as a as a classical bass player. No so way. no Bottesini or Dittersdorf. I may I, in this year I, I maybe played it not once, but <laughs> never again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, during Corona, like we played. <laughs> yeah. We ah, played. you played the Bottesini. Um, how did you get interested in slap bass? Um, I was slapping my electric bass before which was really, really fun. 
And, and the first time I heard uh, some kind of drumming, in my case, it's, most, it, it's mostly drumming than slapping. Uh, I heard Avishai Cohen, the great bass player from Israel, uh, in the Adama uh, album. There's one uh, uh, tune, I don't remember his name, but it's the bass and a section of horns, and that's it. And he plays something like... Uh, not the exact groove, but that's the kind of... Uh, and I was amazed that you can use the bass as a percussive uh, player, as a percussive uh, instrument. And that was like the first time that I, I wanted to, to develop or, and discover this aspect of, on the bass. Do you remember the first lick that you learned on the upright bass? The first lick? I, I, I'm not sure because I, I was playing uh, um, electric bass before, and then the first thing that I, for I think for two months, all I did was to play these scales very very long. Etc. Etc. So that was like the first thing that I've learned on the bass just to get my intonation and sound and uh, st stability on the bow. Uh, and then I just playing walking bass with, uh, with the jazz bands. Uh, don't remember uh, a particularly, uh, maybe some. <laughs> That's a tune, uh, I don't remember the name, but. Uh, that's a lick that I remember from back then. Uh, <laughs> so basically, you probably transferred most of your electric bass knowledge first to upright exactly, and exactly. develop. And what was the name of your first band? You mentioned some jazz bands. My very then. first band, it wasn't a band, it was a duo. Uh, uh -huh. It was when I was 13. I was playing uh, guitar. And sing and sang my own song. I was back then. I was written. Uh, I, I wrote uh, uh, Hebrew songs, and my friend uh, played the saxophone, who happens to be my personal manager for the last ten years. Uh, you 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 saw him, guy. Uh, yeah, yeah I remember. Festival. Yeah. So the, he, that that was my first uh, uh, band, and we played uh, in a uh, in the Central Boulevard uh, in Tel Aviv. Uh, it was fun, uh, you know, to, to have some pocket money when you're 13. Yeah. And after that, as, a, as an electric band, I, 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 a bass I played in all kinds of uh, rock and grunge band. Do you remember the name of that band? Um, in Hebrew, it's called the Nitzolei Mika, the, the Mika Survivor. Ah, I would okay. Say. Mika was a very uh, special girl, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would like you to play something on, on upright. Can All right. Hear? What what can you play now? I'm going to play the I think the first original piece that really uh, gathered all of the technique of the of the drumming uh, and percussive aspect of the bass, uh, and it's called Can't Stop Running. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. 
Awesome, man. <laughs> I love it. Uh, do you, when have you started performing solo? When was it? it was around 2008, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, I was I was two months uh, in India traveling, and uh, somehow when I got back, I I I, I decided uh, that this is a thing that I want to do to play, uh, 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 to have a, s a solo uh, show. And I started, uh, you know, to, to buy a looper and, uh, and some uh, multi-effect and started to explore. And, and uh, in 2008, I started uh, playing in all kinds of clubs in Tel Aviv. And that's how, that's how it started. So you started, in 2008, you started playing by yourself? Yep. So what kind of response did you get? What were you playing? Did you have you already developed your own technique or? Uh, yes, I mean back then I already I had few years of of uh, playing this kind of percussive uh, thing, uh, and and the response was really really great. Um, you know, it was small small audience, small clubs, but uh, great uh, great reaction, and and actually when I started to upload things on YouTube, uh, then uh, the feedback. Uh, was really really great, um, and uh, and and it's it's a journey till today. You know, I'm exploring every every day. What can I do with these instruments? Uh, you, what kind of effects I can use? Uh, how can I use the loop in a better way? Uh, as you can see now, I don't work with the loop uh, loop uh, pedals, but uh, with computer and Ableton and all kinds of stuff. Um so it's a, it's a great journey. Uh, and so so when when did you start uh, uploading stuff on on YouTube? Yeah, that year. Uh, oh, the same year. Yeah, yeah, really not long after I started to to perform uh, my friend who is my manager uh, told me, "Hey, let's let's shoot you something and, and put it on uh, it's great <laughs> it's very it's very unique i haven't seen something like that so uh, we did it and then i think it was the second uh, video uh, seinfeld theme song uh -huh. so that got really really great response in in a few days we got like thousand and 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 thousand thousands of 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 views and and great feedback, uh, and and we we understood that we have something in our hands, and we kept going. And every month another video, uh, first covers, and then uh, I started to to write my own uh, my own thing, and upload that on YouTube. And uh, and and actually, uh, luckily the reaction was better on the on the original pieces. Uh, so it was really, really surprising. Uh, the, the, the cover wa was a great, great start uh, to get the awareness, but uh, really the, the original one uh, kicked on. Did you have like a whole little uh, production? I mean, I've seen like lots of your videos that were like in a little better produced, but when you started, was it like more basic or? Yeah, or not? I mean, the first Seinfeld one is a camera that we borrowed guy was shooting he, he he smoked a cigarette before the camera so there was like a smoke machine <laughs> that was and i was play, I, I was recording it with the with the with the microphone of the camera you know with ah. the bass amp even you know it was the very very basic thing later on i, I started to 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 record thing on cubase and and we started to 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 work with the camera guy and yeah, you know it's it's a process like the show, like everything. Of course, yeah. Are you st uh, uh, are you still uploading stuff on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, um, I have lots of of things. Uh, uh, also from my last uh, my my third album, uh, Hide and Seek. I have a few videos that I want to to publish, mm -hmm. and uh, the next one, the next piano album. Uh, there are all kind. There are there are going to be all kinds of uh, videos. Uh, of also during this uh, pandemic thing, uh, I uploaded a uh, few like uh, "Don't Worry, Be Happy" cover and all kinds of stuff. 
but you're not doing it every month as before, right? No, not as before. Okay. Also because I was touring a lot. Uh-huh. Uh, so we slowed it down. But uh, we, uh, we try, you know. It's try to keep uh, the schedule, especially if you're touring. I, I, I try to do slap bass Sundays every okay. Sunday. And, um, and it was a lot, you know. I, yeah. I, I gave up after a year and a half or something. I can imagine. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. So, <laughs> but, you know, especially with touring, it was impossible. And then during Corona, I didn't have like that much inspiration to continue doing mm. it. But, so you're, you're doing that. The, the oh, yeah, yeah. But I is... figured out, you know, that I wanted to, you know, preserve all these great players and then present slap as a regular technique. And then also like to explain to all these people that slap could be used in pretty much any genre in all different kinds of ways. So yeah. um, so I think that I'm I'm, I'm getting the, 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 the word out. Uh, so it's 34th episode, you know, <laughs> right. it's not, um, it's not the beginning anymore. Um, so, uh, I, I wondered what would you consider the highlight of your solo career? Highlight. Uh, one of the, I mean, the, the biggest performance I've done was, uh, last summer. It was in Paris. Uh, I was, uh, play, playing the opening act for, uh, for Snacky Puppy in, uh, in front of 5,000 people, which was amazing, amazing. I felt like a rock star, you know. Uh, it was really, really unique. After three day, nights with no sleep, because I was touring in the, in, the, in the States and then went to a show in Russia and then to Paris, was hectic, but the best show ever. Um, and oh, I had all kinds of other amazing, amazing uh, opening acts that I've done. Uh, one for Pecnutini when he was in Tel Aviv, and one for Richard Bona, um, and and also great festivals that I've done. One in Riga in front of one thousand people. Um, so there were quite, quite uh, great highlights, uh, and I'm I'm looking for more as as soon as the whole madness will go. Yes. <laughs> Did you have a chance like to jam with those people that you mentioned? Not really. No, no, not really. Uh, unfortunately, because you know it's it's on tour, you can see, you see them on stage. Yeah. The next morning you go to another place. Uh, I had Your great chats with with, with uh, Victor Wooten, huh? which uh, which is a great great guy and uh, we had uh, a nice evening when he was we performed uh, in in the jazz uh, festival in Tel Aviv in uh, in Eilat, it's another city in in Israel. Mm. So uh, so we had a, a nice evening together. Was was you aware of your uh, plane before you guys yeah, met? Yeah, I, I mean I, the first time I've seen him was when I did the opening act for him a few uh -huh. years ago, before, and then uh, now we we. we, we 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 know each other and it's, You're it's already best he's one of my old my idol and <laughs> yeah you know after the the day after the the uh, the the snarky puppy show i was I, I met stanley clark at the at the at the airport and he was flying to tel aviv uh, on the same flight that, as i did uh, so that was really he was really one of my idol uh, I think the first bass player that I've seen doing all kinds of crazy stuff uh, on the bass, on the double bass. Uh, so it was a really, really huge honor to, to meet him in person. I believe I saw him uh, slap upright bass, but using electric bass technique. Yes, I think that's what he do. That's what he does, right? Yes. Right. But he, I, I, I think his, his hand is so strong that he, he can manage to produce a sound out of this technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's um, I saw like a f I saw him maybe a couple times live and you know on YouTube, and I remember that I noticed that he was slapping, yeah. but not like with the upright uh, bass slap technique, but more more of an electric. Right. Um, have you steal any licks from him? I have. I don't, I don't remember. I, I, I mean, I, I, w w when I listened to him the most was when I was uh, uh, doing mostly jazz. 
when mm-hmm. I was in high school. So I, I played some of these solos, but uh, I don't remember them right now because it was 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, it's a great um, inspiration. I, w- I was wondering way. about his slap, if you may, might have um, incorporated some of that in your in your technique, in your style. I mean, I, I, the way he strummed the, ba- the, the bass like in a flamenco. So that's, that's the thing that I uh, stole from him. That, and he stole it from flamenco player, <laughs> uh, guitar player. Uh, so that's a thing that, uh, that was really, really inspiring to, to have this great, great uh, and powerful sound and to have harmony on the bass. What kind of voicings are you using when you do that? I have the fifth string, so it's a C string. Okay. And basically I played it like a guitar, you know, like C sharp, if it's an A major, C sharp, A, E, A. Or if I want a G chord, I will play G on the bass, B on the G string, and D on the C string. Or if I want it minor, or minor six, etc. etc. So mostly it's like if you have if you have four strings, it will be I guess the 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 one, the octave, and then with the third finger, the the major third, B in this case. Uh, but since I have the, the extra string, I can have the fifth, the five of this uh, chord. And that's a, a complete chord. Nice. Do you ever play four string basses? I used to play. I, 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 I started with, uh, with that in most, and until 2013, that's what my, my bass. Uh-huh. Uh, but I was really, really lucky to find uh, 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 this instrument because mm-hmm. it opens up so many options, especially for solo performances, for chords imagine, or, yeah. or high registered uh, solo or with a bow. Do it with some delay. It's kind of nice to have that high high C string. You yeah, don't have to go all the way up, <laughs> like if you for certain certain stuff, and then you can really sound like like a cello if you right. want to. I guess so, like a, like a better like a cooler cello. <laughs> <laughs> um, how many albums have you recorded solo? Uh, so I have three bass uh, uh, albums, which is wait a second. Can't Stop Running, the first one, uh, with the band, with the trio band, guitar and percussion, and then Pin Drop, which is a live uh, session uh, in a studio and uh, audience, solo one, and then the Hide and Seek uh, that I released a year ago. Uh, uh, It's a produced solo album, with lots of electronic uh, aspects. Uh, and now I'm releasing my fourth one, which is a piano uh, album. How have you decided to, to, to do a solo piano album? Actually, during this uh, Corona thing, I had a lot, a lot of time, a free time, and I, ha- I, I, and I had some uh, pieces, piano pieces in my pocket, and I thought, if I cannot tour and everybody are in their houses in lockdown, uh, I thought it was a it's a it's a it's a dream to, to uh, that I had to to I thought that I will make this piano album in few years, but because I had lots of time to practice it, and I thought to myself, I, I anyway I'm not going to perform, so this album is is great for now because I'm not going to perform piano. Uh, so this is the, the time to release it. And also, I'm I, I'm transcribing it and sell the the songbook uh, oh, cool. for it. So 
this is the best time for people to 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 play it when they have free time uh, so since my may I think I started working it really really hard recorded it in in December in the end of December and now we are releasing it nice do you have a release date not yet I guess it would be next month uh, some oh so soon yeah yeah very soon yeah the thing is are Done. You you did like a you you crowd found it, founded one of your albums right the first one the first, the first one, one okay. can't stop it was the crowdfunding one uh, so uh, you're not doing that anymore no not right now it didn't f- I mean for the piano f- uh, uh, album there is no need because it's it's not, it's, uh, it's not such an expensive one you know I just sure. one, took one one studio day and play the piano okay uh, it's not like to have a band few recording days pay everybody so it, this is like uh, for for that I needed the fundraising uh, um yeah Do you have a certain process of writing uh, writing songs? When I write songs, it's uh, mostly it started with with the improvisation. I just improvise whether if it's on the bass or on the piano or even on the guitar. Some of my uh, songs uh, were written on guitar. And I just improvise until I, I find like a, a cool idea, a source of idea. It can be a nice rhythm in, in the can't stop running it's a case it was and when I when I played this I, I, I really felt that this is a groove that can hold a piece and then and then you you, you play with that you know you, you I have I have the, the long bifflet so I, I sense that here comes the melody etc etc and you just uh, I, and when you have the melody uh, I just play it from the beginning until the the, the the spot that I stopped that I don't have any continue <coughs> so <wait. coughs> it's not corona um, <laughs> And, and 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 I just try to 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 keep a current uh, story uh, and that's why I, I played every time from the beginning until the way I stop uh, to feel that it it feels right um, and after that when when you have the basic melody and the and the basic structure of the song uh, uh, to I just tr- try to to fill in all kinds of effect the right effects or, or think whether if it should be a solo piece or with the with the beat uh, and depends uh, what what kind of a piece is it, it is um, that's basically the the process I guess so th- So basically improvising, but it could be any instrument, could be guitar or, or, right. or, piano or bass. Right. Okay. Do you ever uh, write lyrics? Uh, I, I, I was uh, I, uh, writing uh, lyrics uh, back then, uh, Hebrew uh, lyrics. But now uh, in my third album, I, I sing in a language, in a musical language that I... Uh, inv- uh, let's say developed invented I'm not sure uh, uh-huh. if you know the the svara in uh, in Indian music they mm-hmm. have instead of mm-hmm. they sing it and then they just sing the 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 play the the notes of the melody something like that uh, so I I took this system of 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 singing the the, the name of the notes of the melody and I t- played with the sound so it will be something from my region from the Middle East Arabic sounds and So it, uh, it sounds like yeah 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 y
يا عين يا ندى لدها يا زلني ده دوني دويا something like that which is basically the the the, the name of the notes uh, and this is my language cool. <laughs> sounds it sounds cool it sounds complicated it takes time to to, to uh, understand it and and to make the right sound that it will sound like a language you know? uh, do, do you teach yeah when I when I'm tour I, I I do all kinds of master classes and And sometimes like the one we did in Serbia what like, yeah, the, like one what, the one in Serbia it. exactly yeah. uh, I had few of them uh, or wherever I've been asked uh, sometimes private lessons uh, uh, students come to my hotel room and and we and we play for uh, an hour or two um, some skype zoom lessons I, I, I do uh, oh, do you do that now yeah I do Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, so yeah, we should we should tell people that you know if you want a lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's in, everything is on my website. Cool. Yeah, on my website, you can see them Skype lesson or Zoom lesson. I don't remember how I wrote it down there. Um, and, and 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 you're very very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, people, go to adambenezra.com and if you want to play like Adam. Get a lesson. Also, I have all kinds of video lessons uh, that you can see them there. Uh, some short course of drumming or everything that, that I, I do, I, I explain it step by step. And there's also the transcription of that. And in discoveredoublebass.com, there's a very long course, a four hours video course that really encompass everything that I do and talking in there on, 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 on drumming, on effects, on articulation, Arabic playing, uh, everything is transcribed there. So uh, you're welcome to check it out. And of course, uh, you're welcome to, to, to have a lesson, a private lesson with me. So the, that big course is on discoverdoublebase.com? Yep. Okay. And you can see it also in my in, in a link in my adambenezra.com site. Ah, okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, you know, I'll, I'll all these uh actually all these links are in the description of the video, so you guys cool. can just click on that and uh and go directly there. Um do you have any new music coming up on Upright Bass? Uh, I had I've, I wrote a few songs uh, I'm just coming back to the bass after a really long uh, break of playing the piano uh, so uh, it's coming back I'm now starting to to see what, what's the next project uh, I'm going to do uh, and something new so completely I, I hope so I, I, it's oh, really, really, okay. really, you know I, I'm just finished so I really don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> uh, but uh, but I, I, I always try to be different from the thing that I did before mm -hmm. as you can see on, my, on the progress of my album if it's, if it's a live trio a live uh, solo a produced one and then a piano so who knows what will be maybe it's a heavy metal one <laughs> you really. played with a with a with a metal band. Uh, you played upright bass with a metal band, or or, or I imagine. No, I don't remember. I did it. No, you didn't. No, I don't remember. I did what it. have I seen? Oh no, you you played a Pearl Jam song with someone. Right. Yeah, that was a oh. right, right, right. The, 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 um, the, the, the band right now, Israeli band. They did a cover for Pearl Jam. Um, And, and, and they asked me to, to play, I, so I played their uh, oud and, uh, and, and, the, and, and the bass uh, strings, all kinds of Arabic strings. Uh, actually, I can show you. Just a second. Maybe I can show you with the effect how, the, how it sounds like. If I'm going to upload the, the right, right. strings. <laughs> Don't remember the, the, the exact part. 
out, but uh, with some uh, octave and, and delay and all kinds of effects. <laughs> So what kind of effects you use when you when you try to emulate that um, Middle Eastern sound? Um, so it basically, uh, what a delay, reverb, uh, octave, like two octaves high or one octave high, and basically it's 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 you can hear the 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 source octave and then one octave up and maybe even the second octave up. So you have like three octaves going uh, uh, as a unison, like in an Arabic uh, orchestra, where everybody play the same, the same uh, uh, melody. And, and I, I try to adjust the EQ so it will s sound like strings, uh, maybe less low frequency, um, maybe some vibrato, a pedal, um, maybe some compressor will will good it will be good for the pitch shifter, uh, so it will be more accurate and punchy. Uh, but that's basically it. The, the basic of it is is a pitch shifter, um, reverb and and delay. It really sounds authentic. And you know, I really like that sound. You're doing a Thanks. great job. Um, what can you play next? I'll play the first piece that I've written for the five strings bass after I received it in 2013, and it's called Balagusto. Let's do that.
That's awesome. That's great. So what kind of effects are you using now? Um, just reverb and delay. Let's see. It's a it's a program delay, so it's like has a, a rhythm. Ah. Achika, achika, achika. So uh, it makes a nice, nice rhythm for it, and also there is let's see some chorus, chorus delay, EQ and reverb, and some amp. Nice. Well, lots of effects. And you, which, in which program are you using? Uh, I'm using TH3. I'm just going to move to go to for the clean sound, so it will take uh, two seconds of silence. Hear me well? No. Yeah. Now you hear me without the reverb? Yes, I do. Okay. So uh, I'm using Ableton Live as the main program for looping and stuff, and but the effects I'm for the effects I'm using a plugin called TH3. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a great, great plugin. Uh, it simulates all kinds of uh, pedals and uh, and amps and speakers, and it's a really, really great tool and it sounds great on on the bass. Do you do you use it sometimes instead of the uh, instead of the amp? I actually I never use an app. An amp. Oh really? Yeah yeah I, I just everything goes to my uh, sound interface and I just connect it straight away to the huh. to the to the DIs and that's it. All the amps are there. If I play with a band, uh, an acoustic playing, then I I will use an amp. No problem. Sure. But uh, but actually, b b because of all of the effects, and if you put distortion and wah wah, and and then there's a speaker near near you, like a monitor or a, an amp, it will vibrate and feedback, and it will be a disaster. So that's why I'm I'm using in ears uh, in my solo shows. Oh, I wanted to ask you, how do you fight feedback? Yeah, so, so it was really really hard at the beginning when I was uh, working with loop stations, and and. And, uh, and pedal board and stuff like that. I, I had my monitor. I always tried to, to have my monitor here, straight, really, really far from my bass or uh, that, that it won't direct to the bass uh, uh, so it won't uh, create any feedback. It was really, really changing in some of the, uh, of the places. It was really, really impossible because um, you have such a big box here, and you, when you put lots of effects, it's really, really hard to avoid uh, all kinds of feedback. So the in-ears, uh, that's the best, the best uh, option uh, to avoid that. Any particular brand that you would recommend for in-ears? I'm, I mean, really not picky. Uh, I, I'm using Sure, the very basic. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, model. Uh, I'm I'm carrying the 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 mono, mo also the Shure uh, PSR 900. Uh -huh. That's the, the like the, the system. The, okay. Uh, the uh, for the monitor, and the headphones are really 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 simple. Okay. Um, I I read somewhere that you played in Rochester for the international um, ISB. Yeah, the, yes. the Society of Bases. Society of Bases or something like that. How was that experience? Amazing. That was the first gig with this bass two weeks after, uh, after oh. I, I received it. It was amazing. I mean, I was flying to Cincinnati to Nick Lloyd, who built this uh, bass, and, 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 and that was the first time I, I played it, and we did little adjustments. And two weeks after that, I was in Rochester playing this gig and, and doing this master class. Nice. Uh, getting used to the five string, uh, which was uh, really, really challenging, but uh, I did it. And it was a great, great experience. I think it was the first international uh, show that I've done. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's a big one, like, to, yeah. in order, like, 
Yeah, and, and, and last summer I, I did uh, the Rochester Jazz uh, 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 Jazz uh, uh, Festival uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the exact same uh, venue. So it oh, was really? a okay. <laughs> yeah. How did uh, people react over there the, uh, at ISB on your um, unique style of playing? It, it was a very, very nice reaction. I mean, the, the, uh, the room was packed of people. And then the organizers told me, they said sorry for n not giving me a, b a bigger space because they didn't nice. uh, 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 expect that. Uh, but uh, uh, that was like five years uh, after I started to release it on YouTube. So, so people and especially ah, so people were aware. were aware of, of that and, and waited for or some of them came especially for, for this kind of concert. So it was a great, great reaction all over. Nice. Do you have ever, have you ever had any like a classical bass players um, telling you, hey, you know, the, the bass is not meant like to be done, you know, to be played like that. You should yeah. do it Maybe. the other way. <laughs> have you ever heard that? I, I'm not sure I, I, I stumble upon this kind of reaction. Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe they, they talk behind my back. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I heard that, you know, yeah, you heard I, that? I, I mean, for myself, you know, since I was playing uh, just classical for, and then, you know, they would see me slap and say, oh, no, 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 you should be focused on just on classical. Don't do other stuff. It's confusing. You're going to mm. ruin your fingerboard. Oh. Stuff like and then just tell them, hey, it's a Bartok pizzicato. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's a Bartok pizzicato all the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, with groove exactly yeah mm -hmm. well especially in your case hey do you mind like uh, showing me like a basic you know the idea of your of your right. style I so, have a bass here so something something simple that I can yeah, you know, yeah very simple um, <laughs> so I don't use this kind of technique of this pinching and the, okay the, I, I was really in, uh, inspired by, by rockabilly players at the beginning to 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 develop my my technique. So I used the concept, the, the same concept of playing a note and then ghost notes. But I I I prefer to play it here because the sound is softer and I'm not a tough guy like you. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so that's what works uh, better for me. Uh, the first thing that I've done and I wanted to to have is to have the slap. Uh, with the note. So you slap on the on, okay. on the strings and you pinch at the same time. All right. Let me try that. Yeah. All right, let's see. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So try yeah, no. just try to to, to any note just to hit it and pinch it. Something like that? Exactly. It sounds perfect. Actually, you're doing really, really great because at the beginning, most people they have, a, they have a, a short delay between the slap and the pinch. So it sounds like... But you do it perfectly, you know. Like one movement. Exactly. Exactly. So when you uh, so now you can play uh, uh, the same note, one without a slap and one with a slap. And then you have a backbeat. Um. Okay. So. Yeah. Exactly. T try to fill it on other other uh, strings. And you have the a walking bass, exactly. With two and four. Ha, exactly. Okay. And then you can and you can play uh, like that
Excellent. Okay. Uh, Thank you. The next uh, uh, thing is, is to use the thumb in between. So we have like a, a kick in between. And, uh, ah, okay. And, so and, and, the mo and the movement is like, uh, is like slapping, basically, like you slap a, an electric bass. Oh, I've never done. But very, very gently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you need to, to have a much softer movement. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you used to play the head uh, in between the slap. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. But I so have yeah, and, and then you, you can use all kinds of, uh, of, uh, of hits like the bass drum or another snare. Um, so if we're talking about walking bass, like a funky kind of uh, groove. That's just with the, with the slap. And you can uh, use all of the gaps between the notes to add all kind of percussive uh, uh, hits on the wood with your thumb or with your other fingers. Something like that. It's so cool. Um, is there... I always ask my, my guests this, is there a particular terminology that you use in order to describe different slap patterns? Different heats or patterns, what do you mean? I mean like for example, in this um, traditional slap bass uh, groove, I mean, different patterns, I would say. I would say that this is single slap and then yeah. this double. Then this is gallop as a triple, and then triplet, and then quadruple. Then there's different okay. Ones. So so in my case, I, I, I define every single hit as a hit. So we have okay. the, the the pizzicato, the slap pizzicato, uh, the thumb, the the snare, which is done, uh, the wooden snare, which is done in in three and and the third and fourth uh, fingers, or the bass drum. Uh, the only, uh, I would say, a com combination of notes that I have is the triplet. So it's like a note, thumb, and slap. And that's how I, I do the, the triplets. Something like that. But I just uh, define different hits, and when I s when I write it, it's just uh, the 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 different hits. Uh, I mean, I have one one uh, line uh, with the notes, and the other line with the percussive notes. Then you have the slap, the the bass drum, the this this wooden snare, and the thumb, and here also you can use uh, the other hand when, when it's free. Uh, sometimes I only uh, drum on my, my uh, uh, bass. In that case, I, 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 I uh, stop the string with my head. Like 
like that. Uh, the way I, I, I worked on it is just, uh, I just took all kinds of drumming books. Uh, I think the, the, the most uh, book that I relied on was the Mini Monster Rock book or something like that with all the basic uh, rhythms. And I just, uh, just implement these hits on the bass. I had the bass drum, the snare, and the hi-hat, so it's... For, for, for example. Uh, another thing that I did was to take all kinds of Latin bass line book, uh, let's say uh, Bossa Nova. just added the, the, the hits in between. Or if it's a tumbao part like a salsa. What? That's, that's how I developed uh, this technique. This is so cool. When you, t when you, when you talk about that uh, Latin based book, is that the, the, the big uh, Cuban book? Is that I one? I don't remember. I just, I just downloaded what was free online and <laughs> <laughs> that was it, basically. Oh, okay. Maybe it was that. Uh, no, I'm not sure. Yeah, but I had like two, two of them, one Brazilian with samba, samba uh -huh. reggae, and the Cuban one with all of the uh, salsa uh, and, and others, other rhythms in this style, rumba and stuff like that. Yeah, I studied uh, that uh, Cuban one, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a really good one. Um, who would you say is the biggest influence on your bass playing? Uh, it's really, really hard to tell. I mean, as a composer, for sure Bach. Okay. Because I really, really listen to, to uh, all his uh, solo pieces, these cello suites, and, and you can hear these different lines accompanying each other uh, and, and, and speaking and having a relationship uh, one with the other. Uh, and and that really defines my my way of uh, writing solos, like in the in the in, in the, the pieces that I wrote. You have the, the this bass line, and then the melody, and they having a relationship uh, between. And you can find this re a lot in in Bach uh, solo pieces because that's how he thinks. Um, I think Jaco Pastorius was really one of the great influence uh, that uh, I, 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 I could see that, that we, with him, that you can be a soloist uh, bass player. Um, so this one is the first. Um, and there are many other. I mean, uh, Renaud Garcia Fons is a great, great both player, and Stanley Clark, of course. And when I play jazz, Eddie Gomez was like the king. Uh, it has such amazing sound and great, great solos. Um, Avishai Cohen is amazing bass player, and mostly I really, really like his composing, uh, how he um, combined with jazz and, and, and ethno jazz and ethno ethnic music and Arabic music. You can hear all kinds of ethnic and Arabic flavors in his music. And I was really, really inspired by that. Uh, I think these are the, the main ones. You mentioned uh, Renaud Ga uh, Garcia Fong. Yeah. Uh, did you know that he played the same uh, festival, Bass Passion Festival in Serbia just a year later? Ah, really? Played? Did, yeah. Didn't know that. He, he was playing solo? He was, I, I, well, I was not there. I was already in the States, but yeah. I, I believe so. Or, yeah. or, or no, I think that maybe he had a piano player with him. Mm -hmm. He's really, really amazing. He was the first inspiration for me to get a five strings bass because ah, when I okay. saw him, okay, that's how I should play, you know. Uh, 
uh, yeah, he's a really, really amazing. The things that he does with it, with the bow are incredibly insane. Absolutely, yeah. It's it seems that the the instrument doesn't have any limits with him. Right. <laughs> um, as far as slab bass playing on the upright, uh, are there any bass players or recordings that? you would consider essential or as an influence I really don't know. at all? I, was, I, I don't know the names, you know. I was just exploring on the tube, on the YouTube and, and I ah, saw okay. things that, that was really, really uh, nice and, and inspiring, but I really g didn't go uh, you know, the deep in, uh, didn't dig in. Uh, so I cannot mention any, any particular ma uh, name in this genre of, of playing. Uh, I'm not sure, um, but there are really, really crazy, play, crazy players uh, like you. <laughs> um, well, thanks. <laughs> it's um, when, uh, well, what I wanted to ask you, uh, when you play your style, do you ever have experience of like a band leader telling you, uh, hey, play something different or do not play that or do, have you ever had that in the past i'm asking because that happens a lot to slap bass yeah, players yeah i i, I, I totally uh, I, I i i got these reactions from from uh, band uh, uh, band uh, uh, you know um, leader um I, I I think that some of the these feedbacks some uh, were really justified because I was in the be my beginning of my my way and it didn't sound well as now so maybe they were right uh, they preferred me not to play these stupid uh, hits um, so I got this kind of uh, and and uh, and I was really really patient and and, uh, and 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 I accepted it and it was cool. And in some of the cases, the reaction was really, really, really good. Uh, I mean, there was a drummer, and I, I did, uh, I, I gave uh, this kind of a percussion uh, congas uh, sound and kind of feel. So, uh, and and some of the band li leaders really, really uh, into it. Uh, I was also m played in band without uh, without drums. So uh, in the, in these cases, it was really really uh, uh, great to to have this uh, percussive aspect in the uh, in the playing. Uh, I was the drum and bass uh, uh, for this uh, group. Actually, when I started to to work uh, to play this kind of style, I was bo uh, working as a jazz player in all kinds of uh, receptions and events. And because we were needed to play so quietly, in most of the cases there wa was no drummer in the band. Uh, so I got uh, a way to practice this uh, this technique like three times a week and get paid. So it was really, really great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, in some cases it's, it doesn't fit the music uh, in the point of view of someone. Which is great, I accept it, and in some cases it does. So, so I'm open all all the time. I'm, I'm really open to to it. That's a great attitude about it. Uh, have you ever had a chance to play to use your technique, your slap technique, in genres that um, usually have traditional slap, like rockabilly mm -hmm. or New Orleans jazz or a little bit of bluegrass. I, I, I mean, I when I play jazz, I, I, okay, you know what? Well, I had a trio, a gypsy, a, a gypsy jazz kind of trio with the guitar and, and a violin. So. This kind of, of stuff. So this was really, really used. Uh, a great use uh, uh, in this kind of style. Um, all kinds of uh, bolero kind of playing.
So in this particular genre, it was really, really, it really fit, fitted it. It sounds great. Really sounds awesome. Um, what would you say, how uh, things has changed for you as a musician uh, since you started until now? Your uh, approach to music and the audience and, and maybe even the business as well. I mean, there, there's a lot of social media uh, in this business right now than it was, it used to be, which is blessed. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I love it because that's how I can get into people. Um, sometimes uh, it, it's too much for me because I, I feel like I need to all the time expose uh, uh, and, and, and share my, my, my uh, artistic life or my private life, uh, which be, can be a bit exhausting. Uh, but anyway, it's blessed because there's a, there's a connection that is keeping going with the with the audience, which is is great. Um, yeah, I I, I I guess that there is no more. Uh, I mean, I start when I started. The, 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 there was also there was already YouTube uh, and stuff like that, uh, not Spotify, uh, but the albums went down already. Um, so I guess. Uh, there's a really direct uh, connection between the musician, the artist, and the, and the and the audience, which is really really blessed. Um, it's easier to tour, not right now, uh, hopefully in a few months. Um, but generally, yes, it's got uh, you, uh, there are many more flights, so so you you're. You really, it's really easy to, to get to places. Um, that's what I can think of right now. I know that you primarily play as a solo player, but do you have an advice uh, for other bass players how to get a gig or how to start their own solo project? How to start their own solo project? Either how to start their own project. I mean, to put themselves like out there somehow, you know, how to get... Uh, how to start touring, how to get... I usually ask mm. how to get a gig. I mean, it depends. If you are talking about uh, uh, the industry uh, that you are in, uh, in your scene, wherever you are, in which country and city you are, uh, you need to be the best you can in all matters. You need to be the best player with the best sound. You need to be on time. You need to be nice. To, to people, uh, that's very very important. I mean, the the one of the most important gigs that I that was playing with uh, Noah, uh, Israeli singer, but she's very very famous in in um, in Europe. Um, and and my audition was a two hours conversation in her house with the musical producer, and we and I didn't play one note. She knew what, how I play. I, I upload vi uh, videos on, on YouTube, but she wanted to, to see the person that I am. Because uh, when you tour with a band, uh, you don't want to, to tour with an asshole. You want to tour with a, with a nice person that you can rely on and have fun. And there are all, there's all, all the time moments of waiting in airports and for sound checks, and you just want to have a good time with, with the person that you're, you're with. So it's really, really important, like playing, to be a nice and, and, and amusing uh, uh, person, an attentive one. Uh, if there's a band leader, you, you, he, he's, he's the leader. Uh, you, you, he, you are there to support him musically and emotionally. Um, and that's really, really important. Uh, if you want to make your own project, then today, social media, videos, it's like the basic thing that you, that you need to, to do. Um, and you need to, to think of your inner voice, your, your, the, the voice that, that is special, that, that specially uh, made from you, that you are the only one that, that can make this, this uh, kind of sound. You need to be distinctive. 
Um, that's that's really really important. Cause great players are can be found everywhere, but uh, but if you have uh, something unique of your own, they will remember you uh, and your sound and your signature, and and this is really really important. Those are all great advices. I all absolutely agree that you know for for. For getting a gig, it's almost more important to be a n- n- super nice guy than <laughs> super great player. Yeah, you don't want to be stuck with someone who's, you know, somewhere in Ohio or a tour bus anywhere. Right. Like, that keep uh, late or all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It, it, it's not. It's not fun. It's not fun. Um, do you remember any mistakes that you did as a bass player that you might be able to point out to? younger uh, people that are starting out and to avoid them mistakes I've, I've done so many I cannot remember one uh, especially um, Something common. Band, I sometimes hit the right the wrong route you know it happens uh, but but but, um, but the thing that I, heard, I learned from Richard uh, from uh, from Victor Wood in uh, uh, book is just to keep the groove all the time. Doesn't matter uh, if you had a mistake. You uh, you need to follow the groove. So you just keep on and you make out something out of this one. If it's a mis- if it's a it's a wrong note, slide it to the to the to the uh, to the right note and make a thing out out of it. Um, because things happen. You you cannot be focused one hundred sense all the time and if you lose it for for a second then you need to to just go with the flow and 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 correct it but uh, on the floor I mean smoothly um, and 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 if it's really really noticeable then just smile like an idiot and and, and everybody <laughs> will will take it as a, as a nice thing. That happened. Um, well, happens to everyone. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's okay. Mistakes are are, are part of, of life, and and you cannot be, you cannot uh, uh, come up with the great ideas if you don't allow yourself to be free to have mistakes. Because some of the of the great ideas coming from mistakes. The it, it, it happens, and then you you just. Uh, try to manipulate it, and it and it comes out uh, as a great uh, thing, a great feel, a great I don't know, and and nobody in the audience or the band that you're playing with uh, uh, know that on the exact moment that it was a mistake that you didn't mean it. They just accept it as something going on, um, and and if you if you take this uh, error and make it into something beautiful, then it's just a something beautiful that you have done. Nobody will be judgmental about it because they don't feel the, the way that you feel and, and they don't feel your intention. Mm-hmm. So just keep the groove. Keep the groove. I like that one. Um, what would you recommend for you know, fellow bass players to practice on a daily bass? You have the scales. I mean, I, when I when I uh, practice, I take scales and and and, and uh, chords, uh, arpeggios, and I try to f- to play it in uh, in every way that I can. So I can play the the C scale as it is, and then I take three notes and I play, and then. neck, fingerboard, and back, and then I take the same thing with a with different uh, direction. And then intervals. And backwards. two ways and the same thing that I've done four and etc 
etc. The interval of the four, up and down, and then the fifth, six, and, and uh, even seven. So that, and, and you need to go through all of the scales and all of the arpeggio. etc. Minor, seven, major seven, e everything. So that's how you, you, you have a very, very wide uh, vocabulary, uh, a melodic vocabulary, yes. and then you are free to play whatever you want. Uh, so that's like the basic thing. Another thing that I suggest is uh, to, to work on a different articulation, to take one uh, uh, groove, That's the dry way. And then you need to spice it up. Let's take a slide between the C and the D. Now it will, it will sound uh, uh, different if we we'll take the slide from the D and the F. And then we need to, to play the F here. different kind of feeling, uh, also between the G and the F. This is hammer and pull. This is with the slide. Or, this, or, or end with a slight vibrato. So the, the same notes, the same uh, bass line, try to, to think of any relationship between the notes and try to play it differently. That's, that's the thing that I learned from Arabic playing. They play a very, very sim simple melody. Something like that, and they play it all kinds of different ways. All kinds of ornaments, uh, slides, and, uh, and tremolo, and things like that. So it's really, really, it's gonna be, it's gonna benefit your your playing very, very, very much. That's excellent advice. I'll I'll accept and start practicing that way. So maybe today. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you have any special way to warm up before the show? Uh, basically, sound check is the warming up. Mm -hmm. uh, I have like one hour, two hours of, of uh, adjusting everything. And when I play the, the things, I, I warm up. And just before the show, uh, I don't play because my bass is on stage. Uh, but I, 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 I'm just uh, warming up energetically. Uh, I would say I just for try to open up my my soul, my heart, uh, and 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 to get uh, a, a specific point. I mean, uh, state of mind that accepts everything and to, would like to share in a very. Uh, I'd like to to fill my myself with positiveness, uh, before I I go. And sometimes it's even uh, by by oh, stretching my arms and trying to open things. There are all kinds of researches that that if you sit like that y uh, your hormones inside will be will will uh, you you will feel uh, close but if you sit like that for for a moment then the the, the brain uh, release all kinds of of uh, endorphins or all kinds of hormones uh, that are positive and and joyful uh, so this is the thing that i do before i go on stage Interesting. <laughs> I, I would like to go a little bit through your through your gear. What do you say? Who made that bass? Nick Lloyd. Uh, okay. He was in Cincinnati, and I think he moved uh, somewhere else. I'm not sure where. But Nick Lloyd basses uh, is a great uh, luthier uh, in the States. Uh, he built this amazing five strings bass uh, with a removable neck uh, system, oh. so I can fly with my bass uh, is more easily. 
Nice. Uh, yeah. Do you ever have problems flying with the base? Uh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, actually, uh, uh, air, um, all kinds of flight companies can be some, too strict with the extra kilo or the extra centimeters, and you know, you know, it's it's um, it's not that easy all the time. Uh, sometimes that base doesn't arrive, uh, oh. and then did it ever happen that you have to play? It happened. It, it happened. Uh, I mean, it happened a few times that they didn't arrive uh, with me, but it arrived before the show. Okay. So it was okay, but in in uh, in C Sicily, it it arrived on the beginning of the show. So I had to come up with a solution. Luckily, three weeks before, I had a, I, I did a masterclass for all kinds of bass player in huh? Sicily, so I, I I could borrow one. Uh, oh. The problem is that I cannot rent uh, a five strings bass because there are not many of them. Uh, so you just need to adjust to a four strings and do whatever you can. Um, you know, I, try, I, I always try to get to the airport two and a half hours before my flight just to be on time that the, my bass will, uh, will arrive uh, and they will get it into the plane on time. And that's basically it. So this is uh, my bass with uh, Nick Lloyd. It's your sound. You kind of need that bass. Right. Uh, what kind of strings are you playing on? Tomastic, spiral core, medium. Uh, they okay. have a great punchy sound, great sustain, very, very long sustain. Uh, which I really, really like. Uh, for both, they're decent. I mean, if you're a classical player, uh, you want you, do, you, you, uh, you better not play these strings, but for me, they're really, really fine. And they work really great. They have a very focused sound, which works really, really great with the, with the, with the effects. Huh? Oh. Yeah, so, so if you want to play a, a high octave a electric guitar with distortion, you better have a focus one uh, signal and not a very wide one. Mm -hmm. So it will sound like an, like an electric guitar. I've, I found that, that those strings like have like kind of like almost the best balance in between pizzicato and slap and, and, right. and, and bow comparable to the others. I use them all the time. Ah, yeah, you use also the, this. Kind of yes. Stuff. Uh, I, so I, they also make like a, a, a different prototype that I um, that I use. They were uh, made for people allergic to nickel, so which oh. works great, like for my slap style because it's they're slightly less metallic sounding. Mm. Um, but they're you know they I can get a set per year or something. How often do you have to change strings? Uh, between you and me, this bass I got in 2013, and this is the set since then. Oh! <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't feel the need. It sounds okay, you know. Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> I don't, for, how, for how long do you need to, 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 uh, to replace them? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I sometimes break them. Yeah, um, okay. So when you do the, the, these kinds of slaps, I, I can imagine. Yeah. So I usually do once per year on, wow. you know, have a few bases. So how many bases you have? I have this one and my old one, uh, my four strings bass uh, oh. from Romania. What? Do you ever play the four string bass at home? Um, not, no, no, not a oh. lot. I mean, I th I'm thinking to sell it, uh, by the way. So oh. if every, everybody, anybody is <laughs> interested here, you can see my previous uh, uh, clips <laughs> and talk to me. Right. Uh, but uh. mostly I play this. Also, be, w when you play five strings and all of my compositions are rely relying on, 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 on the fifth string. So uh, this is my, my instrument. I understand. Um. And pickups? Pickups. Uh, Fishman Full Circle, the best focus, um, especially for effects. Uh, and I use uh, also a, a microphone, ATM uh, 350 by Audio Technica. Uh, you can use also the DPA. Uh, I put it here if you can see. I don't know if 
see that? Uh -huh, I see it. This one here. Uh, something between the F hole and the middle of the bass. I don't like to have such a, a bassy sound. Uh, so you can adjust it as, as you like. If you want the, the, the m uh, more bassy sound, as, uh, so you put it closer to the F hole. And it's great for, uh, for all the percussive uh, hits, much better than the, the pickup. So the combination between them uh, is a great for live uh, performances. What else do you use and do you, what else do you bring when you go on tour? So I bring everything that you can see here, my uh, sound card, my, my, uh, my computer, this little keyboard, two little uh, MIDI controller or a foot controller, a foot controller uh, that I use with my with my feet, uh, my in-ear uh, system, my bass, um, that's mostly, and my flute. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah. This is the thing. Uh, when you record, uh, yeah. what, how do you record? Do you record it the same way than you play live, or you have a different way to record? Uh, different microphones. I mean, I, I, I record also my, my, uh, my pickup. Mm -hmm. signal. Uh, usually I put another microphone here uh, near, next to the bridge and sometimes uh, uh, neck m some kind of a um, uh, long mic, I don't know the professional uh, w uh, name for it, next to the, to get the, 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 the strings and the, these kinds of trebly sounds. It can be used really, really nicely f in the mix. And sometimes there's another condenser mic here to get the drumming. Uh, so it's two or three microphones and my pickup. Uh, well, do we have a time like for you to play one more tune? Yeah, why not? I'm going okay. to play yeah, something with the all. It's, it's, it's going, you're going to hear the slap technique, but all kinds of other beats and, and stuff. Whatever you want to. I love All right, it. so it's called the Downtown Blues.
All right. That's awesome. I have one more last question for you. All right. Um, after all these years and you did all these crazy, interesting stuff and you travel all over the place, what inspired you to still do what you do? Uh, first of all, I enjoy playing. I really, really enjoy playing and enjoy creating. And, you know, that's, that's the, the, the most uh, amazing thing to, to come up with a, with a melody. And that's a great, great feeling uh, that I feel inside. And also, you know, every response that I get from, from wh whoever, whatever, uh, if it's the, the audience, if it's someone, that, uh, some player that is really, really inspired from, from what I'm doing and, 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 and it's really, really, I'm really, really touched by these uh, amazing uh, emails and messages that I got with my kid just uh, entered the, the house, so I don't know if you can hear him. <coughs> uh, hi. So uh, this kind of, uh, of, of feedbacks really, really fill, in, fill me in. And it's, that's the reason that, that I keep doing it. It's such a great, great uh, style of life, you know. Please continue doing it. You know, we all love what you do. I love what you, you do. And thanks so much for being a part of the Slapstream. And I can't wait to see you and hang out with you. And yeah, my pleasure. And same, same. Hopefully and that see our, play. Our, our paths will cross. Uh, I'm soon. sure they will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much again. Thank and you. good luck with everything. Good luck to you too. And a great uh, thing you're doing. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Awesome. Bye, everyone. <laughs> All right. That was that was Adam Ben Ezra and thirty uh, fourth episode of the Slap Stream with Georgia live from Slapsville. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps a lot with um, YouTube alg algorithm. And please check out uh, my Patreon. That's in the description of this video. If you'd like to support the channel, check out Venmo and PayPal as well. And make sure to follow Adam. All his links are below. And um, we all also posted all these interesting things that you should check out um, with, with his uh, base courses and everything else. Uh, please follow Art of Slab Base and follow me if you're not following me already. And um, don't forget, never fret. Slide it in smooth and keep it in the groove. This is George, and I'll see you next Saturday.